space. Um, we're going to be continuing our exploration of the first chakra. Cipollino is very excited about that, as you can hear. Um, so the first chakra is uh, what we call Muladhara chakra. And I'm not going to get too into it because um, today's class is our get up and go flow class, um, which is ironic because the first chakra is known as a tamasic chakra, meaning that it's a chakra that moves slowly, you know? So it's the earth chakra. So if you think about things that um, like to live close to the earth, like a snail, for example, right? A snail moves very slowly. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, while it is get up and go flow, we probably won't be getting up and going flowing highly as um, like as fast as we might in a regular class. So before we get started in talking about this chakra, I'd like you to sit in a comfortable seat and start to just rock gently from side to side and very slowly. Remember, as I said, this is a tamasic chakra, meaning we move slowly. Um, so as you rock gently from side to side, you probably will identify the sitting bones, what we call colloquially your sitting bones, um, also known as your greater trunk canters. Those are pretty big bones at the very base of your seat. Uh, try to move in between those two. So not so far over that you're going beyond it, but more like you're rocking in between those two greater trunk canters. And eyes closed or gaze softened down, notice sounds, movements, vibrations, all the other things that we normally kind of pay attention to, but also constantly just sort of coming back to this space in between those two greater trunk canters. Then as you're ready, you come into a centered place right in the middle of those two. And I'd like you to place your hands on your knees and start to rock back. So as you rock back and then forward. So the, um, the area of the body that is associated with this chakra is the coccyx. So the coccyx is basically your tail, right? In prehistoric days, we probably had a tail that turned out, you know, just the way Cipollino's does, right? It goes out. But our tail eventually started to tuck under. So you have I think I believe it's four or five bones that are kind of fused together into a triangle that if you rock forward and back, you might even be able to identify this sort of slightly firm spot as you reach a little bit beyond center going back. As I mentioned, this bone is kind of like a triangular bone and um, the, one of the symbols for Muladhara chakra is a downturned triangle. So that's kind of like the coccyx, this fused bony area that is kind of in the shape of a triangle. So once again, you may identify that as you're rocking forward and back. You might not. You might be like, what the heck is Abby talking about? She is gone crazy. <laughs> but even if you think I've gone crazy, see if you can pretend to feel it, right? <laughs> and as you continue to do this, some other things that you might want to consider. So this, the, the um, color of this chakra is a dark earthy red. So it's not a bright red and it's not brown, but it is a red that's tinged with a little bit of brown. So if you're familiar with Red Hook, Brooklyn, I used to live in Red Hook, Brooklyn, the, the hook in Brooklyn has nothing to do with like a, a hook, like on a fish hook or something. It actually is the Dutch word for earth. So it's red earth. So when they first discovered that area, the earth there was a reddish brown. I always think of that when I think about this chakra. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So now if um, visualization is not something that comes easily to you, like say, for example, you're you're still sort of rocking forward and back, but you aren't, no, you don't um, 
like the sense of being surrounded in your lower body with a dark red mist doesn't really resonate for you. You might resonate with the sound of this chakra. And the sound of the chakra is a bija sound. The bija sounds predate actual language. So it's just the sound and it's possible, maybe, that if you make that sound, you might feel that vibration in this area of your lower body towards your tailbone. So I'm gonna tell you what that sound is. That sound is LAM, L-A-M, LAM. And as you, and it, please feel free to continue doing this rocking movement, or if you're sort of over it, um, please sit up nice and tall just as you are. I'm gonna chant that um, sound for you. And then if you want to, you can chant it to yourself. Me chanting it through Zoom, you might not get the, um, the uh, vibrational uh, sensation, but if you chant it to yourself, either out loud or to yourself, you might get it more. So I'm gonna start and then please feel free to give it a try on your own. All right, so an easy breath. Lum, 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 lum. Lam 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 One more time Lam 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 Connect with your breath. Imagine that you're breathing from the very top of your head all the way to that tail that we noticed at the bottom of our seat. As you exhale, feel that rounding up and forward into the belly button and out and up through the nose. Long inhales from the top of the head all the way down to the base of the spine. Exhaling from the front of the pelvis out and up. And one more time, big breath. And as you continue to breathe this way, take the next moment to create an intention for your practice today. It might have something to do with being a little bit more connected to the earth, connected to your foundation, grounding, right? It may have nothing to do with that. Please feel free to follow your own heart, your own vision for yourself today. Taking a deep breath in and exhale. If you'd like to join me, we'll begin with the sound of Om chanting once, taking an easy breath in. Om. Beautiful. All right, coming right away into our table position. So if you are sitting on blocks or blankets, please feel free to move that out of the way. Oh, <laughs> don't have a fit in front of here. All right, so we're working this month from this lower chakra. So, you know, usually when we do cow and cat, we think about moving in our spine. We are still gonna move from the spine, but we have to remember that the spine is not just in the middle here. I want you today to move from your tail. So I'd like you to inhale and lift your tail, let your lower back, middle back, upper back start to arch down as you lift your chin up. Then we're gonna pull the tail between the legs, starting to turn that tail downward, starting to round up from the lower back, mid back, into the upper spine and then the chin tucks down. Now, if you've done that with me already a couple of times this month so far, you may be used to it by now. But if you haven't been doing this with me, guess what? That's gonna feel really weird. So let's do it a few times. You're gonna lift the tailbone, start to arch the spine downward, start to let the mid back, upper back, arch downward as you lift your chin, and then pull your tail between your legs 
and start to arch round up from your lower back, mid back, upper back, and then the chin is tucked in. Now go ahead on your own pace, moving from the tail as best as you can. And if it's not quite resonating for you today, don't worry about it. Not really that important. Just want you to get a sense of that your spine is not just one little piece. And when you move one part of your spine, the rest of your spine starts to move as well. Good. Breathing in and breathing out. Slow and steady. Good. And then as you're ready, we're going to separate the knees, bring the big toes together, and reach the seat back into a child's pose. Slide your hands way out in front of you. Press the palms into the floor. Let your elbows just slightly lift off of the floor. Breathe in and breathe out. Take another breath. And as you exhale, start to slide your hands over to the right side. So as you slide your hands over to the right side and let your chest sink down towards the floor, you're going to feel a nice spiraling from the inside of your left underarm going down into the sides of your body towards your left hip. Hold here, breathe here. Don't force your chest downward, but if your chest happens to go closer to the floor, that's fine. Your forehead or your chin can rest on the floor. Anyone that feels better for you could even turn your head perhaps to one side. Breathing in. As you exhale, slide your hands back into center, reaching the seat back and maybe pausing here, pressing all your fingers, your whole palm into the floor. Your elbows might even slightly lift up here. Big breath in. As you exhale, start to slide your hands over to the left side. So this time, that nice uh, lengthening going down the right side of the body, a little bit of a spiral from the inside of that underarm going to the outside outer edge of the torso, perhaps even down towards your hip on the right side. Hold here, breathe here, chin or forehead to the floor. Maybe you turn your head to one side if that feels nice. Breathing in and breathing out. Take My apologies. I could take another breath in. And as you exhale, slide those hands back into center. Pause one more time, maybe to let your chest come a little closer to the floor. And then find your way into your table position. Knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. And then we're going to walk the hands a bit forward. So they're a little further forward. We inhale and bring the shoulders forward, starting to let the hips draw towards the floor. But instead of just sort of letting it hang down, I want you to draw your gluteal muscles towards each other. Check that your shoulders have not crept up towards your ears, right? So this would not be okay, but we're gonna push the floor away with the arms and get some space for those shoulders. Then we sit back almost as if we were going back to child's pose. And we'll do that again. So inhale, coming forward, bringing the chest forward, letting the hips hang down, squeeze those glutes. Exhale, take it back almost to child's pose. And again, Inhaling, coming forward, letting the hips draw downward. Exhale, almost to child's pose, tuck the toes under and lift up into downward facing dog. From your down dog, bend your knees slightly and reach your seat up and back. So bring the heels close to the floor. Then we inhale, lift up onto the toes. Try to keep your arms exactly where they were. Then exhale, Bring your heels closer to the floor as you straighten through the legs. Inhale, lift up onto your toes. Then exhale, bring the heels closer to the floor. And then one more time, inhale to lift up onto those toes, reach the seat back and exhale, bring the heels closer to the floor. 
Inhale and come forward to plank. Make any adjustments and then exhale all the way back to downward facing dog. And again, take the whole inhale to come forward to plank. Remember, we move slowly in this chakra. Exhale, reach the seat up and back down dog. And one more time, inhale, coming forward to plank and exhale, going back to downward facing dog. Start to pedal your feet and begin to pedal your feet all the way towards the front of the mat. Please feel free to bend your knees and as soon as you can, get your whole foot to the floor. Give yourself a little space between your feet, one or two fist distance, and grab hold of your opposite elbows. Let the weight of your arms bring you, bring the top of your head closer to the floor. Big breath in. As you exhale, see if you can hollow out the belly as you bring your chest closer to your thighs. Breath in, breath out. Inhale. As you exhale, release your hands down and grounding into your feet slowly, roll up, letting your head and shoulders be the last thing to arrive, taking your time, shrugging your shoulders back when you come up, making any adjustments to your clothes, shirt, hair, and then coming to stand in Tadasana, mountain pose. Let your hands um, face forward with the fingertips open, and your feet will be about maybe one or two fist distance apart. Close your eyes and start to rock a bit forward and back, just a little, putting some pressure into your toes and then some pressure into your heels as you rock back and forth. Notice how that feels for you as you do that. And then as you come back into the center, Rock slightly from side to side. And as you rock slightly from side to side, notice how that feels. And then as you come back into the center with your eyes closed, take a moment to notice how your feet feel against the floor. Do they feel arched? Do they feel flat? Do they feel tired? Do they feel awake? Lift your toes off of the floor, kind of digging the balls of your feet into the floor. Hold here and breathe. Notice sensations of muscle acting, even though you're just holding here, but you might feel something in the back of your legs, maybe in the front of your legs, maybe even in the knees. If you can, and not everybody can, so please, it's really no big deal if it doesn't work, try to open your toes out kind of wide and bring your big toes only to the floor. If that's working for you, hold that and notice how that changes how you feel in your legs here. Breathing in, breathing out, paying attention to the sensations in your feet, and then finally, let the other toes come down to the floor. Still with your eyes closed, notice how it feels to have your feet on the floor now. So remember that this chakra is the root chakra. So get yourself grounded, root yourself into the floor. And then finally, before we continue, in your mountain pose, I want you to imagine that you're squeezing a yoga block between your thighs as you hold your Tadasana. Now remember, Muladhara is the pelvic floor lock. So we want to feel a contraction going from the gluteal muscles and wrapping around into the front of the pelvis, that downward triangle, right? That downward triangle could be the coccyx. It also could be the pubic bone, all right. Inhale, lift arms out and up, gaze upwards. Exhale, bring your arms back by your side. 
Keeping in mind that this is a tamasic chakra. So inhale, taking that whole inhale to lift. So there's no rush. We're moving with the breath. Take that whole exhale and release the arms back by your side. And then one more time, inhale to lift the arms out and up. And exhale to bring the arms back by your side. Keep your feet grounded as you inhale and lift your right arm up. And as you exhale, slowly reach into your left side. See if you can keep your weight even in your both feet. Inhale back to center and exhale to lower that right arm down. Inhale to lift the left arm up. As you exhale, lean into your right side. Hold here and again, see if you can keep your weight evenly distributed into your feet for now. Inhale back to center and exhale, release the arms back down. If you have blocks, go ahead and grab blocks. And inhale to lift the arms all the way out and up. As you exhale, swan dive over your legs. Inhale to step the left foot back. If you have a block, bring your left hand onto that block. Inhale to lift the right arm out and up. Lift your right toes off the floor. Try to open those toes out wide and then bring the big toe down first, if possible. Then bring the other toes down. Bring your right hand down onto a block. Maybe bring the blocks to the higher level and start to straighten through the right leg. Press your toes into the floor as you breathe into the back of your body. And as you exhale, draw your nose closer to your knee. See if you can ground your left heel closer to the floor. Inhale, re-bend your right knee and move your blocks to the side. Step back into plank. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, let your knees come to the floor and inhale and untuck your toes. And as you exhale, elbows hug by your side as you lower the rest of the way down. Keep your hands where they are and press your hips into the floor. So ground that. And notice that when you ground your hips into the floor, your gluteal muscles suddenly surround your coccyx, your tailbone. Press into the floor with your hands as you lift your chest, shoulders down, a cobra pose. And then exhale into a closed knee child's pose for one breath. And then slowly exhale all your way back to downward facing dog. Bend the knees slightly, reach the seat up and back. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, walk your feet towards the front of the mat. Ground the feet down as soon as you can. You come into a forward fold. Wrap your first two fingers around your big toes and use your thumb to close up that. Let your knees be slightly bent and then begin to pull your chest downward by bending your elbows. Feel free to extend those legs longer if you're ready to. Top of the head reaches downward. Press your toes down grounding in even though you have your fingers wrapped around the big toes. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, release that and lift up to a flat back, halfway up, and then exhale and release. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way out and lift up and exhale. Bring your arms back by your side. Inhale, lift arms out and up. Exhale, swan dive over the legs. Inhale to step the right foot back. And if you have a block, your right hand can come onto the block. 
Inhale and lift the left arm out and up. And as you do that, lift your left toes off the floor. Open up those toes as wide as you feel you can and then bring the big toe down first if possible. And then the other toes. One more breath here. As you exhale, if you have another block, bring your left hand onto that block, maybe on the higher level, and start to straighten through the left leg as you press your left toes into the floor. Inhale into the back of the body, and as you exhale, bend your elbows, bringing your nose closer to your left knee as you draw your right heel closer to the floor. Breath in breath out. Inhale, re-bend that left knee, moving your props to the side, and step back into plank. One big breath here. As you exhale, knees come to the floor first. Inhale and untuck your toes, pressing the tops of the feet into the floor. And as you exhale, elbows hug by your sides, as you lower the rest of the way down. Glide those shoulder blades down your back and take a breath in. As you exhale, keeping those elbows alongside the body, begin to lift up into a cobra and exhale back to child's pose. One big breath and exhale back to downward facing dog. Bend the knees slightly, reach the seat up and back, and then begin to walk your feet again towards the front of the mat. Try to get the whole foot down as soon as you can. Knees can bend as much as you need to. As you come into your forward fold, this time either continue with your yogi toe lock, bringing the fingertips around the big toes, or slide your hands underneath your feet. So if you're feeling pretty warmed up, then you can definitely do this. Use your toes to press into the wrist as you ground the back of your palms into the floor with your foot, if you're doing that. So Pada Hastasana or Pada Gustasana. One more breath here. As you exhale, release, and then inhale to your flat back, and exhale down. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way out and lift up. And as you exhale, bring your hands into prayer at heart center. Start to pour your weight into your right leg. Inhale and turn your left knee out to the side, pressing your left toes into the floor and touching your left heel to your right ankle. Ground into the right foot. So pressing into all the toes and the heel of the foot. Lift up from that space. If you'd like to, you can begin to slide your left foot up your right leg, but you do not have to. So this is a grounding chakra. So if you feel more grounded with your foot on the floor, enjoy that. We have five more months, six more months to play with lifting the foot up higher. <laughs> Good. Start to bring that right foot now to face forward and touch the left toes onto the floor. As you exhale, slide those left toes as far back as possible. Begin to lengthen into the center line here. <clears throat> Reach your left heel back a bit and then inhale to lift the arms out and up for your high lunge pose. Exhale, open into warrior two with that right knee bent. Lift your right toes, press them back down. Lift your left toes, bring them back down. Notice if that changes the sensation of your legs in this pose. 
Then inhale, reach back, very grounded. Nothing moves in these legs as we reach back into peaceful warrior, left hand down the left leg. Exhale, bring hands down to frame the front foot and inhale to plank. Here you have choices. You can either hold plank, pressing all your fingers into the floor. You could drop your knees first, or you could lower all the way down. But remember, we're gonna go slowly. Inhale, untuck your toes if you're not holding plank. If you're holding plank, stay there. As you exhale, press into the tops of those toes, either lift up into cobra, supported plank, or up dog. And then we'll all meet back in downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Ground into your down dog with pushing your hands away, reaching your seat up and back and lengthening the heels closer towards the floor. Inhale, lift the right leg up and back. And as you exhale, bring that foot between the hands and help it get there. Inhale to lift your hips higher. Take the whole exhale to bring that left foot forward as you fold. Inhale to your flat back. Exhale and release. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way out and lift up. And exhale, hands come back into prayer at heart center. Pouring your weight now into your left leg, turning your right knee out to the side to draw your right heel to your left ankle. <clears throat> Lift your left toes up, open them out, and slowly bring those toes back in. Lift up from there, super grounded. Imagine that your tailbone is kind of pointing down towards the floor. Breathing in, breathing out. If We're gonna have time to play around with lifting the foot up if you'd like to. We're gonna slide that right foot back in, slide the right leg back for your lunge position. Zip up from the midline as you inhale and lift the arms up. Exhale, open to warrior two. Lift your left toes, lift your right toes, bring them back down. Let that give you an extra sensation of grounding through the lower body. Inhale, reach back, peaceful warrior. Right hand down the right leg. Exhale, hands down to frame the front foot. Inhale to plank. Exhale, you either hold plank or lower down, but super slow. Elbows hug by your side as you lower down. Inhale, untuck your toes. You lift up into a cobra, supported plank, or up dog. And remember, if you're lifting up, you're going to squeeze those glutes around your tail. And then press back into downward facing dog. Bend the knees, reach the seat up and back. Lengthen the neck, shake it out. Lengthen your legs, so draw those heels closer to the floor as you push the floor away. Inhale to lift the left leg up and back. Exhale, bring the foot between the hands. Remember, we take the whole exhale to do that. Inhale to lift up onto those fingertips and exhale, stepping the right foot forward as we fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, sweep arms all the way out and up. And exhale, hands come back into prayer at heart center. And we'll do that one more time. Bring your hands into prayer, heart center, start to pour your weight into your right leg. And this time, inhale and lift your left knee forward and up. As you exhale, take that left knee out to the side and just press the toes to the floor, 
with your heel now slightly higher than your right ankle. Here, if you'd like to, as you ground down into that right foot and press the tail to the floor, you can begin to find some arm variations that might feel nice for you, whatever that is, tree pose. Start to slide, if you want to, that left foot up the right leg. Hands can be anywhere you want. Good. Notice the breath, right? So we haven't talked a whole lot about that today, but we wanna make sure that we are breathing as we hold, because if we stop breathing, it sort of sends this internal message to the body that you're in distress. Great, inhale. Lift arms up, bring that right left knee up and bring it forward. Bring your hands back into prayer, heart center and shoot those left toes back again. Take the whole inhale to lift up into your high lunge. Take the whole exhale, opening to warrior two, grounding into your roots of your feet. Inhale, reach back, left hand down the left leg. Exhale, hands down to frame the front foot. We inhale to plank and this time, however you want to come down, we're going to come to the floor. Slide your hands alongside your body with the palms facing down. Press your hips into the floor. Draw your thighs towards each other. Notice that your gluteal muscles kind of wrap around your tail. And then if possible, press the tops of your feet into the floor. Inhale to glide your shoulder blades down your back. And as you exhale, lift your chest up, reaching your fingertips towards your root, towards your heels, towards your feet. Hold here, breathe here. Continue to squeeze down, planting your hips into the floor. One more breath. As you exhale, quick pause in child's pose and then downward facing dog. Three breaths. Get yourself regrounded, push the floor away, lengthen through those legs. Ow. Inhale, lift the right leg <coughs> up and back. Exhale, bring the foot between the hands. Inhale to your fingertips and exhale, step that left foot forward as you fold. Inhale to your flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way out and up. <coughs> and exhale, hands come back into prayer at heart center. As we start to shift our weight into the left leg, start first by lifting those left toes. And bring those toes wide and let them plant back down into the floor as you inhale and lift your right knee forward and up and exhale to take it out wide and then tap the toes to the floor as you bring your right heel just above your left ankle. Zip up, ground down and zip up. Make any arm variations that feel interesting to you. They could be the same arm variation, they could be something else. So you might like to do something behind the back, for example, pulling the navel to the spine. Make sure that you are breathing. Send the message that you are comfortable with your roots into your space. Inhale, lift the arms back up, lift that right knee up as you exhale, bring that right foot back into center, hands into prayer as you shift that right foot all the way back. Take that whole inhale to lift the arms up. Exhale, open to warrior two, pressing into all toes and the whole foot. 
Inhale, reach back for your peaceful warrior. <clears throat> that left leg is still exactly where it was. And then exhale, hands down to frame the front foot. Inhale to plank. And once again, as you exhale, either dropping the knees first or lowering all the way down to the floor. Untuck your toes. Try to press the tops of your feet into the floor if you can. Press your hips downward, squeeze the thighs towards each other slightly, slide your arms by your side again, or interlace your hands behind your back if you prefer. Let your fingertips sort of point towards your heels, take a breath in, gliding those shoulder blades down, and as you exhale, lift up, but work on still pressing your lower body into the floor. Hold here, breathe here. As you exhale, release, sit back into a quick child's pose. One big breath, exhale to downward facing dog. Breath in, push the floor away, exhale. See if you can open up those shoulders, create more space between the ears. Let the heels draw closer to the floor as you play with straightening the legs. Then inhale and lift the left leg up and back. Exhale, bring the foot between the hands. Inhale, lifting hips slightly higher. And exhale, stepping that right foot forward as you fold. Inhale to your flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way out and up. And exhale, arms by your side. Inhale, lift arms out and up. Exhale, swan dive over the legs. Inhale, step the right foot back. And exhale to downward facing dog. But separate your feet wider. Start to walk your hands back a bit. So we get into an elephant pose where your heels are down on the floor and we're just lifting your fingertips up and then placing those fingers back, lifting the toes up and then placing the toes back. So we're really grounded into the floor. Bring your knees to the floor wide, bring the big toes to touch, reach your seat back into your wide knee child's pose as you come back. And this time in your wide knee child's pose, see if you can let your chest sink closer to the floor. Feel um, your tailbone, your pelvis, just opening and relaxing here. So let the muscles right now be easy and soft. Begin to walk your hands back towards you, sliding legs out in front. If you have a yoga block, grab that just in case. And bring your feet together with your knees apart. Setting up into our pigeon variation. So we're going to fold the left leg over the right leg. We take that left knee out to the side and we'll shift the right shin into the center. Grabbing hold of your block, that block could come in front of your right knee or in front of your right shin as we draw forward to rest over the leg. Let your palms face down today and play with moving your fingers as if you were running your fingers, say, through grass or the beach, soft earth. Open the mouth and move the jaw around and pay attention to where your body 
connects to the floor. Sink into that. And begin to bring your hands back underneath your shoulders, lifting your chest. Move your block to the side and bring your feet back together again with your knees apart, but slide your feet further out in front of you. Reach your hands forward and take your elbows out to the side for star pose. And especially star pose where your tailbone is really um, your tailbone is quite flush to the floor. It's very exposed. So if that resonates with you, just sort of notice that space, that tailbone, that coccyx. Good. And slowly begin to roll that back up, sliding your feet in closer. This time we'll fold the right leg over the left and take that right knee out to the side, shifting the left shin into the center and grabbing your block. And the block might be in front of the left knee or in front of the left shin as you drape yourself forward. Again, for today, palms facing down, returning your focus back to the intention dedication that you said at the beginning of your practice today. Once again, sensing, feeling, the connection to our groundedness. And even if it's just a plastic yoga mat, you can imagine that it's the earth, grass, beach, rocky, whatever you like the best. Big breath in. Slowly press your hands into the floor, lift your chest up, slide your legs out in front. <clears throat> Bring your feet to the floor with your knees bent. And make sure that your ankles are directly underneath your knees. And for this time, we're gonna bring the arms alongside the body again with the palms facing down. Once again, the sensation of kind of grounding into a, a sensation of rootedness. As you press into your feet, we're gonna lift the hips up. Try to lift your hips high enough up that there's one long line from your knee to hip to shoulder. Press into your fingertips and then lift your toes off the floor. Try to open those toes out as wide as you can and then bring your big toes down first. Then let the other toes come down to the floor as you experience the sensation of what it's like to have those feet be so connected to the floor. 
Make sure that you're squeezing those glutes up into your tail, protecting that tail, supporting that tail. Slowly release your hips back down. Touch your knees together. So knees are still bent. Touch your knees together and work your feet out wide, almost as wide as your yoga mat. And then either keep your hands on your body or find some way to open up the arms that feels nice for you. So it's gonna be different for everybody. So please feel free to just go with what feels good for you. As you hold here, identify once again that spot where your tail is. Like, and if you'd like to, you can even do like a little rocking, like a miniature cow and cat, just to identify that space, keeping it nice and open as you rock from side to side. Start to hug your knees into your chest. And with your knees pointing up to the ceiling with your feet dangling down, just rock gently from side to side. And then roll all the way over to your left side. So on your left side, stack your knees right on top of each other. Stack your hips right on top of each other. Place your left hand on your right thigh and then inhale and open your right arm all the way out and up, reaching it to the floor on the right. Your chin could be facing the ceiling or facing to the right side. So whatever feels good for you. Start to move back through center, bring those knees back up, glue those legs together, and then roll to your right side. So make sure that your knees are stacked right on top of each other, your hips are stacked right on top of each other. Your right hand presses onto your left thigh, and you inhale and open that left arm all the way out and up. Chin either facing the ceiling, or facing to that left side. And as you hold here, consider how you would like to be set up for your resting pose. Um, I'm gonna suggest that for today, we come into a lying down position with the feet on the floor, knees parallel to each other. If you happen to have space along your wall, you may like to be more grounded into your low, into your torso. But in the spirit of staying connected to the ground here, maybe keeping the feet on the floor, but just nice um, flatter surface. Please feel free to wrap up into a blanket, maybe put socks on if it's chilly in your space. And then when you're ready, we're going to do our squared breathing practice, and then we'll finish with the bija sound again of, the, of this chakra. So we'll start by taking an easy breath in and exhale. And we'll begin to inhale, two, three, four, five, 
Hold your breath, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Hold the breath, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, Hold. Exhale. Hold. Breathing in. Hold. Breathing out. Hold. and release. As you hold here, consider this lower chakra. Take a deep breath in. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. Take a deep breath in. Start to make small movements, wiggling fingers and toes. Circle at the wrists and ankles. Please feel free to gently hug your knees again in towards your chest and perhaps rock a bit from side to side again. And then roll yourself over to one side, whichever side you prefer. Take a moment on your side to appreciate the effort that you put into your practice and feel the benefits of the practice in your body. Taking your time to find your way back into a seated position allowing your eyes to close or your gaze to soften down. Bring your hands in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra, or just find a way to connect with your heart, allowing your eyes to close or your gaze to soften. Take this last moment to be very grateful to yourself. taking the time and effort for your practice, showing up for your practice. Let's take a breath in and exhale. And if you'd like to join me, we'll seal our practice with the sound of Om chanting once, taking an easy breath in. Om. Thank you all so, so much. Namaste.
have a lovely rest of